All right, guys, and um, welcome in to the next Play and Explain. Um, if you guys are interested in getting extra breakback, guys, uh, be sure to join my Discord server for private uh, breakback deals on top of what you're getting on top of the site already, guys. We have one for 888, GG Poker, Unibet, stuff like that. So do, if you do join the Discord, guys, be sure to check out the breakback deal section and the contact Disco Lime if you do go ahead, if you want to make an account on any of the sites in the Rakeback Deals section, all right? Um, so today, we are going to be doing some 10 and L uh, Russian cash, guys. 10 and L Russian cash on GG. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. We can probably do a 45 minutes recording today. So 10 and L, guys, as you can see. So let's just get into it here. We'll see what happens here. Gonna open up the Jack 10 this time on a low roll. Uh, 7 6, we're going to open. We get called. We flop a flush draw here. I guess the high V pit player here, lads. I'm going to assume this guy is some form of a recreational and just start with a small bet and see what happens. You just get the fold, that's fine. Again, usually in theory, that board is going to be a more polarized C betting strategy. But against the fish guys, we know at this stage that we are not going to be doing that. So I would have been opening up this queen seven, uh, simply because of this guy is under three betting and probably over folding in general. Here we are going to make this seven X. See what happens. Uh, King nine going to open, obviously. So you can get a four back here from Mr. Asia Eric. Does not fold around. We get called here. Flop comes six, seven, six. I think we can check this back sometimes, uh, but I'm not going to do it on a 31. Can probably check this back half the time on this board. I don't think it would be a bad, um, bad strategy. Um, so we are going to go 70 on this turn. He will have some queen X of hearts here. He probably might have some seven X, but Think we kind of go a little bit more polar here on this turn. Now if we get jammed on here, lads, I think I might exp well, probably not, I guess. But we'll see what happens. I do think potting this and probably stacking off is going to be the play. But we will check back on that river now because I think there isn't many worse hands that'll call here. Especially on this nine and a half river when we're already behind to like six, seven suited, seven, eight suited, and obviously some queen X of hearts just improved. So we will give up on this river or check back, and that's why. So again, like that's not gonna be I don't know if I jam on a now yeah, probably still have to jam on a non-heart river, but definitely too thin to go for three streets of value there. Um I think in that situation by the river, his range is going to be very, very condensed. Um, and not really have like any pocket eights or pocket nines or pocket tens that often because they are supposed to call at a frequency on the turn especially the ones with a heart i would assume and here we just fold versus the jam fold versus the jam all in but flop and turn size i'm happy enough with uh, for in terms of flop size and again that's probably going to be more a half pot bet in theory but for me for simplification that's based on future street exploits i tend to just have a small sizing on the flop keeps the range wider where you're going to get more falls on future streets also bigger ex exploits if the turn goes check check for example so yeah kind of i'm not saying you should do it but um if when you know the exploits and you know the overfalls and all that stuff, you should be um I'm not building your strategy around that overall, but just have a good level of awareness of what's working better in practice than a more difficult strategy to execute based on theory outputs or, or solver outputs itself. So like you know, but what I'm getting at that is like if you bet half pot on the flop, you better know how to continue on the turn in in, in every single node, whether you're in position or out of position. Because it's very, very important because if you're not playing the turn well, when you bet half pot leads, you're going to be leaving a lot of EV on the table by not executing right. I just find betting small on the flop is a little bit easier of a strategy to execute on future streets in terms of betting and checking, I would assume, and even raising sometimes, depending. I just say it's time we're going to open 10-4 folding. 
but yeah, hopefully I explained myself correctly there. Sometimes I <laughs> not forget why I, what I was talking about originally, but sometimes it's hard to explain my thought process. Thought process sometimes, or I feel I miss say some words every now and again, or not correct terminology, poker terminology itself. Uh, we're just going to go up in small here with the queen seven. Again, like that, getting called by a high VPIP player here, guys. I'm going to have some impression that he's a recreation or at least go with that baseline of a broken stack, calls from the small blind and stuff like that. And we're always going to be bet, bet, betting here now. If we get raised, it'll depend on the raise sizing. But we will always just bet, bet, bet here without any hesitation and not worry too much about it. Obviously, now when we river some showdown, we, we beat some Jack X here. So now we don't need to bluff. But I would have been bluffing otherwise. I would have been bluffing otherwise, and he's got 9-2 suited, and that's exactly why you should be bet, bet, betting against his profile, because he's going to arrive to the fucking river, lads, with way too wide of a range versus auto reg will. Here we're just calling the small three bet. If this guy bets small, I might call one. So it's a little bit more around that 40%. It's pretty close here. It's pretty close, but if in doubt, I usually always overcall. But if he barrels this turn here, we're just gonna we're just gonna fold, obviously. This is very, very close in the flop. This much I'm very, very much aware of. But a backdoor straight on two overs, it can't be the worst thing to call. It's just if you face a double barrel here, you're kind of screwed. And that's what happens, unfortunately. But I don't mind that. If he checks that turn, there's gonna be a big overfold versus both profiles. So versus the 40% there, I really don't mind with the two overs and a backdoor straight on, even though it is a two-tone texture. But as I said, I don't mind doing it exploitative because if they ever check the turn, it's going to be a green light to fucking bluff. And I will always take that into account with my flop decision. But as I said, versus 40% there, it is going to be close. But if, if, if in doubt in that situation, you should always call. I think Raisin might not be a bad play there as well, in hindsight. But I don't like Raisin recreationals in that line. Because they're going to end up 3-betting too much, I think, is what happens. But yeah, either way. Uh, so population are drastically overfallen versus bet small here. We have some good backdoor equity. I'm just going to start with a bet here. I'm not really going to use an RNG in this situation at all. You just don't need to, in my opinion. Just understand what's bet at a high frequency, what's kind of mixed, and kind of go with your own intuition with that. But yeah, definitely stabbing there a lot, blindly blind, and that's what you guys should be doing. They're all, they're like overfolding versus all sizing schemes in terms of like stab sizing or float bet sizing, whichever way you want to phrase it. Um, so yeah, definitely want to be aggressive with stabs there. Definitely, definitely. So fours here. No information on this guy. So I'd rather bet fours here with a heart is what I assume. So I'm gonna check this back. Uh, kings here always betting. I would say. And I think fours here would just fold. I don't really mind. So as I said, just building my range around bet small here. We just get the fold and people are still going to be overfolding versus that, guys. People should not even be folding like ace. I'm not even sure, man. Like a lot of like queen jack offsuit should never be folded there, realistically. Uh, here we're going to three bet. Let's see what happens. If we get four bet, obviously folding. Twos, we are going to fold this time. Queen ten, going to be opening. We do get four bet, so we just fold. Okay, so nines are going to be opening. Uh, we will be three betting. Again, this is usually a sign of a recreational, but based on his stats here, I'm pretty sure it's going to be some form of a reg. Even though he did open for 3x here, you will see guys doing that on these games. If, if I get four bet here, I am just folding. I am just folding nines there versus the four bet all the time. Even though it might be mixed in theory, I am not going to be overcalling versus four bets against guys on this pool. I think it is absolutely fucking torching money in general. Um, not opening the queen eight here. So I kind of have this rule of thumb on these, if I was to play these micro stakes games, that if anything was like indifferent in terms of what looks, what you should be defending in theory, I would just be pure folding that on these games. So, for example, if like ace five there is being called, I don't know, 50 to 60 percent of the time, I'm just pure folding that in these games. Because I think if you start peeling them hands when they're already zero EV 
against a balanced opponent, I can be pretty goddamn confident, lads, that it's going to be burning fucking money in these games, defending optimally against four bets. Now, on the other hand, four betting, that's where it can get a little bit interesting. I'd probably be a lot more aggressive in general with four bets uh, as the opposition player with hands that are definitely mixed between call and four bet itself. So against this three bet size, and it's a little bit annoying simply because it's against a shorter stack. Uh, but I will peel the pocket eights and see what happens on the flop. Here we're going to start with a bet, or sorry, open the jack eight. And we do get three bet, we just fold now. We are going to peel one with the eights. We're going to have to fold on that turn now though. If he does end up betting, king eight here, we're just going to fold. And yeah, we are going to have to fall on that turn now. Not a lot we can do. Hand is going to be already indifferent there, even against the wreck profile. Just not going to be over-invest in there in a spot that's going to be super, super marginal by the river. Same thing here, just going to be mostly going for a 3-bet here to 8 big blinds is probably fine. Ace-10 here, we're going to start with a check. And I don't mind leading half pot here on the turn. We're going to, it's going to be a pretty big overfold here, I would guess. But he does end up calling, and we do river the nuts. Um, the problem is here, we block the ace -X that we'll bet if we check. I just think we have to bet here. So item wise here, I'm thinking around seven big blinds, I think is fine. Because I don't want to go over this 30 big blind threshold. We do get raised, which is comical. Obviously, we have an easy jam here. I didn't really expect this to happen. I'm only betting 14 on the river here simply because I don't want to go over the 30 big blind threshold and pay an extra big blind and a half in rake. But obviously, we just jam here now. Surprised he uh, found a raise there. That's something I didn't really expect. But maybe he never expects me to have a... Um, flush there in that line, which is probably plausible, I guess. But yeah, I didn't really want to bet, bet bigger than uh, I probably could have bet 7.5. That would have been a lot more accurate, would have brought the 29 big blinds. Probably should have done that, but yeah, not a big deal. I mean, the thing is, like, if he has a better hand in that situation, I assume he just has to always raise versus that size, and which is probably what ended up happening, anyways. Um, so yeah, maybe he decided to raise some two pair there. I don't know. Or maybe he just had like queen 10 with the queen, I don't know, queen of hearts or something. I don't really know. But like he decided to raise there, which was very, very surprising. Didn't really expect him to have much, if ever, a raising range there. Um, king jack here with the jack of clubs. I do not mind betting this this time. And king six, I'm going to go for a check raise here. Depends what size he goes, actually. So versus the small size, I'm always going to be check raising, and here I'm always going to be bet, bet, betting now with the jack of clubs. So I'm going to be shifting to a lot of uh, aggressive check raises here against the smaller sizes. And I'm just going to go B70 here on the turn with this hand. Let's see what happens. Uh, we do river the king here. I'm probably just going to go for a block bet fold on the river. Although there might be an argument to actually check to check call, which I might actually do. But he does check back. I think that's whatever. And he's got 9-6. So, like, you could possibly still go 10 on that river. But, like, given we unblock, like, I don't know, jack 10 of spades, 10 eight, suit it and shit like that. I kind of prefer just giving him the option to bluff there. Like, because I'm never check fold in that hand. Although that probably line will be over bluffed or under bluffed, excuse me, in that situation. Um, Kings here, we're going to start with a small bet first, his profile. And if he raises, we're just going to get it in. Uh, Jack nine here in this situation with top pair with bad backdoors. I am just going to fold, I think. Especially with this guy under the gun, we're still need to be a little bit conscious of. So now we're going to check on this turn. Move that hand, move on to the next hand, excuse me. Um, so facing the three quarters here, I'm actually just going to start raising. Simply because there's a lot of bad river cards. For the most part. You know, any diamonds, any nine, any queen, any ace. So I just want to try and get the money in here if he has like some two pair or pair plus draw. And if he's got ace, queen or queen nine, then kudos to him. We do get the fold, that's fine. 
If that was a little bit more of a drier texture, I would be a little bit more call happy. To say there wasn't a flush draw there, I'd be a little bit more inclined to just check call. But when they bet the three quarters there, lads, a lot of the times they have a... They're still going to have a lot of shit, don't get me wrong. But on the more dynamic textures on the turn, when you check that in that situation, um, yeah, the more... As I said, the more dynamic the board is, you want to be a little bit more aggressive with your fast plays. I think it's a good good thing to do against fish. Uh, look, a check call in there wouldn't be wouldn't be a mistake either. But yeah, either way, uh, this ace nine here we are going to call, and I might float one in position versus small if he does decide to do that. But versus pot size, lads, we out of there. Absolutely out of there. Alright, seven eight here folding. So open the ace four. Take it down. Alright, just fold this king jack. Ace three folds. King two folds. We'll be defending this first and min open. Probably if it goes multi-way as well, to be honest. Yeah, I will flick in a call here. I mean, it's not going to be a high EV call, but I'd rather call this than ace-nine off. Put it that way. Put it that way. And we'll see what happens here. If your man does check here, and it does check through, uh, given that he took that long on the turn, I'm kind of indecisive between bet and check, so I might go for another check here again. Given that he might have thought about betting with some hand, and now he might bet now instead, is what I'm thinking. But he does check through again. And this guy does bet. We are going to raise here. Because it's a half pot stab here. I think this is going to be very like, you know, 6x heavy, pocket 7s, pocket 8s, maybe some 4 or 5 that we want to start raising against now. Uh, here we are going to start with a small bet. And probably bet this at a frequency. I think we're just going to go B70 on the river here now. Uh, I'm going to check back this queen jack here. And I am going to call a bet versus half pot. Here we are just going to go 70% here. We did get called pretty quickly. He's got 10-9, so nice spot there for us. Queen jack here, just going to call, as I said. And he's got king jack, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I he I would expect people to mostly stab that on the turn, or sorry, on the flop with the 10-9 suited. But um, I didn't think he was going to be that strong, personally. I didn't really think he was going to be that strong in terms of having 9x himself. It's hard to have 9. It's hard to have a 9 when I have the 9 as well. And there's two 9s out there, obviously. Um... Again, like that, I'd rather be calling Jack-9 suited here than, like, Ace-9 suited, so I will flick in a call here again. Uh, here we're going to float with the King of Hearts, because if ever goes check-check on the turn, we have a print uh, with a bluff on the river. Um, size and wise here, I don't think it matters too much, because this line is going to be very, very overfolded, but given I have the King of Hearts, I will go for an overbet. But the problem is here, he might be somewhat inelastic with ace and he might not fold. Uh, not the best turn card here. But I will check this back. I will check this back. Will you get called, unfortunately? Yeah, I mean, absolute fist pump call, miss. I mean, that shouldn't happen too often, by the way. We are going to check this back. And we're going to go for a small bet here on the river. Something like eight big blinds. And given how fast he checked, I think I will always be calling a raise. So we did get called here. Yeah, I got called by a set of sevens. He just leads pocket sevens on this board, lads. Imagine. Jesus Christ. So yeah, I think he's a very, very capped range there where I don't think he ever has like the ace of diamonds. And given that the king and the queen of diamonds are out there, we kind of obviously have the nuts for the most part. So I'm just trying to target a range there that might have like nines and tens with a diamond that will always call. But yeah. Outside of that, I can't see him calling too many bigger bets, I don't think. Uh, top set here, obviously starting with a bet. I do get called. We do turn... The full house here. This is a spot where I block so much of the continuing range here. Like, if he has an 8, he's just going to bet that on the river anyways. But I want him to improve to, like, if he has queen 9, 
or 10-9 or hearts. Or if he has a jack, that'd be fucking awesome. Unfortunately, he checks here. Like, I don't think he ever checks too much jack X. So it's going to be very, very difficult to get called here. But I am just going to go for a half pot bet. 9-7 here we're going to call for one. Yeah, as I said, it's going to be very, very difficult to get called there. Uh, versus a half pot bet here. I don't think I fold, but it's definitely close. I think I'll call one more and fold on the river. Don't mind either either way. But yeah, I'm pretty sure we have a pretty bad bluff catcher here for the most part. I think this line is going to be very, very close either way. I'm not too sure. Like half pot, half pot is super, super close. Here we're just going to start with a small bet. But uh, I am going to fold here, I think. Uh, Queens, I'm going to best again here on the turn for around 40%. And I know if I ever get check raised here, I'm basically screwed. But we just get the fold. Definitely want to do that for equity denial, guys. If he has, like, I don't know, some pocket pairs with a spade there. And just to avoid getting bluffed as well on the river, that would be pretty shit. And not knowing where we are. So we're three betting here. Three betting here as well. And we got four bad. I assume this guy is a recreation when he picks this size, and so obviously not going to be continuing King Tens or King Six suited, excuse me. But yeah, uh, he's opening from in there and then making a three X in position, so we can pretty we can be pretty confident that he's a recreational. Pretty pretty confident. Um, so Jack Ten here, all the time we're going to be mostly three betting this. I would say majority of the time is what I meant to say. Excuse me. So 10-7 here folding. We will be calling a 4-bet as well, but it doesn't happen. Queen-Jack here just going to fold. Queen-7 fold. 6-2 fold. Um, Probably not going to open here, but there's probably an argument for us. So uh, queen three here we're going to be defending. Might be a low frequency three, but I'm not too sure. Some of these things are. Um, we are going to check here on the turn again. And we just check fold there when he snap bets. We are going to be checking a lot of 4x, a lot of 6, 7, 8, 9 of spades, stuff like that where we will go for a check raise. I think that node is a node that people are very, very unfamiliar with. That when they face a check raise in that node, they're a little bit kind of like a deer in headlights, as I like to say. So given our impression that this is this is the guy that 3x'd uh, pre-flop in terms of 4-betting. Um, so I am going to check here again on the turn simply because these, these profiles like to reopen more than regs in this line, delay C-bet line. So I will go for a check raise. Unfortunately, he doesn't take the base. Um... I think this guy is going to be somewhat inelastic with ace highs. So I will go for an overbet in this situation. But unfortunately, it doesn't work out. So queen 10 here, we're obviously going to be calling a three bet. And we're definitely going to be peeling one in position. I think we even have to peel versus half pot. Given that he checked here, there's going to be an overfold in this line. So I'm going to be double barreling here pretty aggressively. So I'm going to start with a small stab. And I'm going to bet this again on the turn. Is what I'm going to do. I'm probably, give up on imp oh yeah, probably going to give up rivers most of the time, is what I'm thinking. But we just get the fold, so that's great. So you definitely want to be attacking that double stab line quite a bit as well, guys. Um, and then probably, given that you've already attacked an overfold on flop and turn, you might want to be a little bit more selective with your blockers on the river. But again, just as long as you're constructing your flop and turn stabbing range, um, you know, a lot of the times you should have relevant blockers on the river anyways. There is still going to be an overfold, I believe, in that line twice. Or when you bet twice, excuse me. But, um, yeah, definitely want to be stab and turn pretty aggressively either way. Uh, here we look rolled low. And face a 4-bet, we're just going to be folding versus the 4-bet. That's fine. Even versus the min -raise. Again, like that, timing-wise, he did it very, very quickly. So usually that's indicative of an easy decision. 
aka a pretty strong a strong range excuse me so that's always important to take into account lads so fours here always going to be defending versus 2.5 I'm probably going to peel one on the flop versus bet small. And bet small he does. So exploitatively going to be overcalling flops because if it ever goes check check on the turn, we have a pretty good, big overfold in a node. So the hands that are e like negative EV or close to negative EV on the flop are going to be benefiting by overcalling in that situation because if it ever goes check check, then we can um, obviously bluff river. But once he, once he bets the turn here, we're just out of there. So I always incentivize to my students to overcall the flop and if in doubt call both in position and out of position. Um, but yeah, it's more so to capitalize on a mistake from population if they do end up doing it. So Jack's in this situation, given how fast he squeezed, I am just going to call here this time. I don't really want to be four betting here too often. I don't think if this was heads up, I'd be far more inclined to four bet. But in this situation, I'm just going to call. Uh, Ace three here probably going to be raising. So I don't really have information on this guy. Uh, so exploitatively, I am always just going to stab this on the turn to probably check back river. And that's basically going to minimize the amounts I lose in this hand. I know if I ever get check raised here, I'm fucked. Um, so I can just start folding here on the turn already, but this so size in here can still get value from ace king and ace queen potentially And also reduce the amount I lose by checking and facing a bet on the turn and again like that I will do this with pocket sevens pocket eights 10x etc But we get the fold so that's happy days So again like that you kind of want to be pretty aggressive with stabs there on the turn like if I had queen jack of clubs there or king jack of clubs I probably might check that back more often um, because we're blocking more of the folding range there. And you don't want to bet and get jammed, for example. With then sort of, you know, better equity draws. Well, sort of hands like that that can still bet for value, deny equity to two overcards and stuff like that. You probably should be stabbing that pretty aggressively, for the most part, I think, anyways. Uh, so aces here, we're obviously going to open. We just get the walk or get a fold. Uh, tens, I would have been mixing four bet and call. And probably against this profile, I would have been four betting exploitatively, given he's a pretty high three bet percentage. But once this happens, obviously, we're just folding. I'm just moving on to the next hand pretty swiftly. I say pretty swiftly. Uh, so jack two fold and queen jack, we're going to open. Fold to a 3-bet from any formation. Face the 3-bet. Uh, King-10 here opening. I think Ace-3 here can probably be defended versus 2.3. So I am going to check, or sorry, defend. And once he checks back here pretty quickly, I am just going to go for a small bet here. I don't know if this guy is a fish or not. Only small amount of hands there, but he does seem a little bit on the more passive side, but I am going to go for a small bet here, and he does fold. So very, very weak check back range there in that line, lads. Population are doing a very, very bad job about constructing it pretty well. So you definitely want to be attacking that line pretty aggressively. I've said that countless times already in these videos. Uh, here we're three betting against a fish, or a weaker player. we just get the fold, that's fine. Here we're three betting the king jack suited. Seems pretty standard. And we get the fold as well. So yeah, I'm going to go for another 15 minutes, guys. So ace-king here always want to be squeezing. I think it's something like 15 big blinds is fine. I think 16 will be appropriate as well. If this guy calls, it makes it very fucking awkward. Yeah, he clicks this back, man. This is going to be a relatively strong range. Pretty, pretty strong range, but I don't think I can get rid of Ace-King here. I think we just kind of have to run it, unfortunately. We do get calls. Probably run into Kings or something, or Ace-King as well. I mean, it's kind of whatever. I think he should actually just 4-bet rip that pre. It's a lot easier hand to play. But uh, at the same time, you could probably mix some 4-bets like that as well. But obviously when you jam ace-king there, you probably don't expect too many folds in general. 
And usually when you get cold, you're probably not in the best shape as well, but luck is kind of one of those things where you block the calling range, you block value. Just got to suck it up sometimes. Uh, so sevens here, just checking through on the flop. Probably just going to try and get this to showdown, I think. But we'll see. I think this is probably has enough showdown value. Just check here again. I just check through. Oh, we lose to eight. Sad times. But yeah, probably completely standard from, from all profiles. Uh, so 10 9, we are going to check behind. Very, very tight player. Uh, we're going to show you about the seven big blinds here. And he makes a 37 big blinds, let's. 37 big blinds. How in the fuck can somebody make a 37 big blind into a two and a half big blind pot? Are you well? Uh, mostly, uh, mostly going to be see betting this, I would say, on this board. Let's just get the quick fold. Snap fold. I would have hit, hit a straight. But yeah, 37 big blinds into a two and a half big blind pot, lads. What do you reckon? Playing 5v pip overall. But I had outs to the nuts, to be fair. Not great. I right, take it down with the ace king and the king five. Fold that there. We'll be three betting this. We'll be called four betting it as well. Especially against somebody that makes it only three big or four big blinds. So probably going to make this like 19. Seems okay. We are a little bit deeper as well. So that's something to take into account. Obviously, if this guy comes along, we're just going to be playing super passive post flop. And if he clicks it back or anything like that, we are just done with this hand. So we are just basically done with this hand here now. I don't see any merit in ever doing anything but check folding here. Especially when we have the dynamic of this guy limp, or sorry, you know, raise calling versus a four bet. And as I said, just you just don't need to go a wall in these hands, lads. You can just see what happens. And again, I'm going to be checking range out of position there. And I'm just going to be getting in like ace, king and aces plus and not really worrying too much about it. But it might be interesting to see what these guys turn up with. Uh, facing this small tree about size, and I'm not going to be folding King Nine suited. But we, unfortunately, we do not get the showdown. Um, so recreationals, from what I can see with this guy, the way he tree bets small, he's going to be a weaker player on average. Fish like to check raise flops quite a bit. Is what seems to happen. So versus the block bet size in here, it's interesting because there's multiple different strategies. So I will call here. I think mostly. And see what happens on the river. Obviously, if he bets, we're just going to fold. And he does bet. We just fold now. It's fine. I fold there. Yeah, we definitely want to be playing pots against fish. But at the same time, man, that guy was playing 24-16, so... Probably not a recreational, but like three bet sizing was quite bad there. You're supposed to be making a 12 big blinds. Uh, here we're obviously defending. Uh, we did turn this straight, but this is a spot where I'm just going to be going relatively small with my stabbing range or probing range. They get raised here. We probably can click this back, I'd say, is what I'm thinking. But maybe on this board, we don't need to. We are just going to call. Could donk the river actually in hindsight is what I'm thinking as well. But we're definitely not going to be falling versus the bet here. We just call down now pretty happily. He's got eight, nine of clubs. Nice hand. Nice hand, meat. Just what I didn't uh, click back the turn, eh? Just as well, I did not. Sorry, seven's here folding. Uh, six is here opening. We're probably going to start with a check with this hand. I think it's fine. And if it's a min bet here, obviously just going to be calling as well. Eight on the turn. He does check back here. I'm assuming this guy is a recreational. I would assume. So I'm going to check here again on the river to check call. But he does check back. 
He got ace queen with the queen of clubs that he did not decide to three bet pre flop nor bet on the turn, which I would have folded by the way. I would have folded the turn if he had bet again, unless he bet super small. Is Queen Jack going to fold that time? And the a6 here are going to be three betting on a low roll, which you actually do roll this time. Yes, nine here opening. We're folding versus the three bet. If we get four bet here, lads, we're folding also. Now we get called here. And this does look like a reg profile. So I am going to start with a small bet here. Even on this board text, or if I get check raised, I'm just going to fold. You get called. Going to stay barreling on this turn exploitatively for b70. Just try and get falls from some ace queen of spades, ace jack of spades, king queen of spades, and also put pressure on like sixes, sevens, eights, nines without a club, is what I'm thinking here. But if we get called here on the turn, I am going to be mostly giving up on the river. If we get raised here, just going to be giving up as well. Because we've already condensed his range to quite a bit. And as I said, once we get raised here, lads, we know we are fucked. So we can just fold. So I'd rather bet I'd rather bet that turn than check back because of an overfold that they're going to be overcalling flop and you know if you ever get raised there. I mean look, I mean I'm not going to be barreling that turn too often with with that sort of hand basically. But when you think about the range that you're trying to target the fold, there's actually a few hands that you should be attacking even with that hand on that flush complete and turn. But as I said, once you get raised there, people are not going to ever have bluffs, ever. So you should you should be very, very aggressive with double barrels against perceived regs. Most of the time, anyways. Defo, defo. And it's mostly because they're going to overcall pre... They're going to call... Like, regs will call correctly on the flop. Or, sorry, uh, pre-flop, excuse me. Um, but when it comes to flop, they're overcalling. So they're going to end up overfolding turn quite a bit. Due to overcalling the flop in terms of frequency. So they need to be a little bit careful of that. But they're definitely not doing that button versus cutoff. They're overcalling quite a bit, and I'd assume in earlier formations as well, if that is the trend. Uh, Ace-King here, we're definitely going to bet this time. i just get the fold. Take it down with the 10-9. But yeah, as I said, hopefully I'm uh, able to talk through my thought process well enough. Sometimes I said I like to ramble. And maybe go off on a tangent that might not be the correct terminology. So do correct me if uh, that does happen. Uh, King 7 here we are going to be defending versus 2.1. It's definitely a thing population are doing wrong and not, and not calling enough versus 2.1 and below. This is going to be a defend basically big blind versus hijack for a min open. So I kind of treat it quite similar to cutoff versus big blind. On this flop though we will be folding I think. Although maybe not with the one over in the backdoor straight throw against a small bet. Um, so I'm just going to go small here on the river. I don't expect ASX to fold here, but I want to kind of still be able to best kind of queen X here thinly. So I will just go for this small bet. And we get snap raised, so now we just fold. So people will overfold in that line quite a bit. But I do think it's going to be very, very inelastic with ASX there. So I want to make it look like I have some ace high floats so I still want to bet that river. And also some tin value with Queen X. I think it looks looks good there. Um, I don't think I ever do that with value, so to speak. Like, you know, if I had 6X there on that line for trips. But I still don't think it's a bad play. Because on that ASX river, you're supposed to be probably relatively passive with your checking range, I would say. Or your overall checking range. But yeah. Still definitely want to be stabbing there because there will be a pretty big overfold and it's a pretty big overfold versus bet small or block bets in particular. Not sure how much, but it's probably around the 10 to 15% range, I would say, on average. You definitely want to be attacking that probe line, even though it's kind of like a shit river to do it on. But I do think the flop call is whatever, as I said, it's kind of one of those things where you want to have one over and a backdoor draw, which is kind of technically what that, had, what that was, even though it wasn't suited. Uh, here we are, four betting this ace knight or ace jack, obviously folding to a jam. So this is an example of me wanting to be more aggressive with four bets versus these guys, 
especially with the mixed call four or mixed call four bit. So I'm going to start with a small bit here. And we do get called. So probably going to go check on the turn here, I would assume. And we're off in the 10 7. So he does check back here. I would rather go for a 10, 8% bet here and fall to a raise than check and face a bet, to be totally honest. Because I know if they ever raise this river here, it's always going to be a strong hand or a stronger hand. And sometimes they might actually fold. Sometimes they actually might fold, which you don't always expect, but definitely better off block betting the river there with marginal hands than checking and facing a bet for the most, most part because you're going to get a lot more accurate information when you block bet and face a raise because people are going to call hands they're supposed to raise, they're going to fold hands they're supposed to raise and yeah, just again, kind of not raise thin enough for value I guess. So they just end up over calling far too often with hands they're supposed to raise. That's a huge, huge benefit for your, your hand in particular. Ace King here checking back on this board, although this guy does seem like a recreational. So maybe C betting that would have been better, but I am just going to bet one big blind here on the turn. Get value from some king queen, ace highs. If we get check raised here, we're just going to fold. If we do get check raised here, we are just going to fold now. And not worry too much about that. Um, so ace queen here with a spade. I don't mind either or. I rolled a hundred, so I am going to check this back. We do turn the spade. So this guy leads here for half pot. He's going to be some form of a recreational. Uh, we're going to call here, and if he picks a certain size on the river, we're going to be bluff raising. I mean, we don't need to bluff raise now. But this line will be very, very over bluff from recreationals. There might even be an argument to actually raise here against another half pot bet. I am going to go very, very cheeky against that. Call me crazy. Uh, here we are going to four bet the ace king and just get the money in and he does three bet here So now we just fold now we call with the ace king here as well And we run into jacks. Yeah, here we just fold here now Maybe calling there is better, but whatever we can run this twice if he wants to run it twice Just didn't expect him to pick half pot there with the um, With the nut flush to be honest So I went for a tin raise It looks like we're gonna lose here Ooh, next door. Unfortunately not. But yeah. Balls of steel to run it once, mate. Tilt. Uh, ace two here folding. But yeah, standard spot. The, 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 the ace queen might have been a bit ambitious, but as I said, I just don't think he's ever going to have like the king or the ace of spades there. King of spades, maybe. But I never thought the ace of spades was going to be a thing for the half pot sizing because I would have been bluff raising that quite a bit. If I didn't improve, if I didn't improve to the flush itself. Well, yeah, maybe that wasn't great, but I really, really don't mind going thin against the fish for the most part. I think it's going to be a pretty good strategy. Um, I'm going to lead small on this turn again for exploitable reasons. There's some rivers I can bet on. An ace, a nine, a three, a four. We get raised, so we just fold. It's fine. Nine five, we're gonna fold as well. Them airball hands already generate so much EV buys by just clicking that button. So I would always strongly, strongly incentivize that you get, do that. Of course, you get no action with Ace King. Ace ten, we're gonna open. We get a small three, but we are just gonna fold though. So I'm gonna go for another five minutes. So we'll do a fifty minute one today. Uh, so against the perceived recreational again, we are going to three back this hand. Queen time, we're going to fold this time. Unfortunately, we get the fold. And we get to walk with the ace five. Queen four folding. Five four here, we will be opening against a recreational. If it does fold around to us. Jack ten here, opening. We face a four extra folding there. Uh, so Jack-10 here, going to start with a bet, I would guess. Especially with the 10 of hearts. 
Um, we are going to check on this turn. And Ace King here, we're going to three bet again. Or sorry, four bet, excuse me. Here we just have to check fold, unfortunately. So we are four betting this here. And if he jams, we're obviously going to call. We do get calls here. Um, I think this hand like always wants to bet here in general. I think if you had like Ace Jack suit with hearts here, it might want to check more often, but I am going to bet Ace King. I do get calls. I do like betting here again. For another small size, and I think it's fine. So I will do that. And if we get jammed, we obviously have to call. And we will still jam on that Diamond River because we still beat some Ace Queen and Ace Jack, which might not call this river jam. But you know, if he has a flush here, then so be it. If he backdoors some 7 8, that would be kind of annoying. But I just don't think at this SBR we can ever check fold, basically. So we'll see what happens. Uh, the King Jack here, we are going to call against the smaller tree bet sizing. And we are called by Ace Jack, lads. It's an absolute punt by him. Uh, so this guy checks again. So if we have this recreational profile here, we're going to treat this the exact same way like in the other example and check back a very high frequency. And once he checks here again, we're going to start bluffing here now. And in terms of highest EV size, I'm just going to go for a small size in here. If we get check raised, we just fold. Uh, the question is, can I go thin for value here? I am going to call this, but I'm far from happy about it. Given that this profile is a recreational, you don't know what he can turn up with here sometimes. And like, I don't think I'd fold any 9x here, to be totally honest. But I'm definitely not folding the jack of spades. And that's why. So he just went for a weird stab on the river, lads. So as I said, even if I had 9x there, or 9x plus, I really don't think I'm going to be folding. If ever there. But yeah, that ace jack man against that guy, like that's not going to be a good call on the river there. I don't think, at least not on average on a flush completing river. I'm not sure how much that deviates the kind of under bluff tendency because that's going to be pretty close. That's going to be pretty close on that river when the flush completes when there's still some hands like ace king and ace queen that can probably bet bet jam. Yeah, it's, it's going to be very, very indifferent. I would say whether I find that call, I probably wouldn't be too keen on overfold and top pair there based on an overbluff tendency because he's supposed to like, I think have King Queen offsuit with a diamond there as an example. But yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of whatever, you know, uh, seven, six here. We are going to defend. We do flop a straight, probably not going to be slow playing here. Although we do lose some Jack seven suited and Queen Jack. So we probably can't go too crazy here. Uh, but versus the small bet, I am going to check raise. I am going to check raise with this hand. And uh, we do get called pretty quickly, so I don't think this ever really is the kind of straight, I don't think. So I'm going to go over bet on the turn. I still have like ace nine, ace ten here that they might end up jamming. Or something like that. We're still obviously ahead of sets as well. Yeah, I mean, I think we just get this in here, but this is going to be relatively strong. As I said, like, if he, have, if he has Queen Jack here, he has Queen Jack. But I do expect here to be a little bit fucked most of the time. I, I would guess. Yeah, and he says Queen Jack and we're just dead. I mean, it is what it is, lads. Uh, Queen 8 here. We are going to start with a bet. Uh, we're going to check on that turn. I mean, exploitatively, I could probably start folding that on the turn, but I just don't know these guys sometimes. I probably shouldn't have bet this on the turn in hindsight, but not a big deal. So you can get some folds from under pairs, but we are going to give up on that river now. You can just check back. Yeah, jack nine, I don't expect to fold on the turn, but we're kind of targeting the fours through nines there, I guess. But yeah, a bit of an unfortunate one there with seven, six lads, but I mean... From losing straight over straight there, it kind of is what it is because you just don't know sometimes we do dominate some value that might play it that way. Like sets might do that, two pairs might end up doing that in that line you wouldn't know, especially based on a certain profile tendency. The guy opened for 3x, so it might be a possibility of him actually being a recreational. That's why I call 7-6 suited or 7-6 off suit preflop uh, based on that data point. But um, usually that would be a fault. 
Usually that would be a false. Um, so I think I'm going to three bet this. Yeah, I'm going to three bet this half the time. So we are going to three bet this. See what happens. Yeah, just get the fold, fine. All right, we're probably going to leave it there, lads. We're probably going to leave it there. So global sit, sit out. Right, so we did pick up kings the last time. We get called by a recreation as well. So flop and top set here is obviously very, very nice. We are just going to start with a small bet, though. We do get called here. I'm probably going to end up check jamming this turn. I'm not going to lie if he does stab. Yeah, we are just going to check jam this here because you can definitely call off like some worse hands here, like flush draws, pair plus draw and stuff like that. So we definitely do not want to be slow playing. So this is what I mean. When somebody bets pot here on these really dynamic textures, you should be fast playing quite a bit because they're going to have random hands like that that will call off. So you definitely don't want to be like calling here. I mean, it doesn't matter if he gets there. You don't want to be just like calling there and then check calling river because there's, there's a lot of bad rivers that you don't really like. But that's just a standard spot. If he gets there, he gets there, lads. But, um, yeah, I mean, hopefully you guys find this useful. I might do these on GG more often. I'm always going to mix the sites regardless, whether I might do 8 at 8 sometimes or, you know, Zoom. But I think people like to do the, the GG format more often. But, yeah, outside the 7-6 offsuit, lads, it's probably the only hand that I wasn't too keen about. But, yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there, guys. I hope you enjoy it. And as always, any comments or feedback, please do not hesitate to drop it in the comments below. All right? I'll catch you guys on the next one. GG.